ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد على آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. We start in the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon His Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions, and all of his followers until the day of reckoning. I'd like to welcome you to this new episode from the series of glimpses from the fragment prophetic biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Today we are addressing a very interesting story about the going of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to Thaqif in the city of Taif and the jinn listening to the glorious Quran after that journey. So starting with the reason why the Prophet peace be upon him went to Taif. Now after the so much persecution and rejection of the message of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Mecca, he decided to go to Taif. He might have some support there and looking for to deliver and to convey the message of Islam to the people of Taif, and that is to Thaqif. So what happened? He went there to the uh, leaders of that tribe in Taif, and he met three major ones, three major leaders, Abdi Alayl, Mas'ud, and Habib. Now, these are, uh, were the, uh, the three ones that he, uh, he, he wanted to, to uh, speak to, and he spoke to them about Islam. And you know what they said. Uh, first one said uh, uh, he will uh, tear the uh, uh, clothes of the Kaaba, if he, uh, if he was a messenger. The second one uh, said to him, hasn't Allah found someone else uh, other than you to send? And the third one said, well, I'm not going to talk to you because if you are a messenger, you're more dangerous than uh, if I would talk to you. Or if you're a liar, then I'm not in a, any position to talk to you. So they returned him. They never said, let's hear what you have to say. They got into a conversation with him. They never said that. They rejected that. But then he started to meet some other people. He went from one uh, man to another. He wanted someone to listen to him, but they all rejected his call to Islam. Not only that, but he stayed there 10 days, and every day he was rejected. Finally, they said, you have to leave us. You have to abandon our place and they asked their own children to hit him with stones. So they lined up on the way of the Prophet leaving Taif uh, towards Mecca, and they started throwing uh, stones at him. Uh, uh, Zayd ibn Haritha, one of the companions, was with him, and he started to protect the Prophet, peace be upon him. So he got himself uh, uh, some wounds in his head because of the stone throwing, and also uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had some bleeding in his, in his feet. So he was, he was hit on his feet and Zayd ibn Haytha was hit as well. And he was kind of like feeling very, very uh, uh, frustrated uh, because of what happened. Although, alhamdulillah, he was always having that hope that... Uh, these people would come to Islam at some point in time by the grace of Allah. And, it, and, and uh, as he moved towards uh, 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 getting out of, of Taif, uh, there were two, two people who were, they were, they were having some relationship, um, like marriage relationship with, uh, with Quraysh, and that is uh, uh, Shayba and Utba, uh, the sons of Rabi'ah. Uh, they had some uh, uh, farm where they had grapes and they um, they asked uh, one of their servants called by the name of Addas 
and they said, why don't you uh, uh, ask this man to rest and to, and to get some, uh, some grapes so he can, he, he can uh, you know, uh, relax after all what he faced. So that what happened, uh, uh, he was sitting uh, trying to get some, some, some rest and uh, Adas came to him and he gave him uh, uh, some, some pieces of, of uh, uh, grapes and he, uh, he said, eat. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, looked at it and said, Bismillah, before starting to eat. So he was very uh, amazed at uh, this. And he said, uh, uh, where are you from? He said, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asking uh, Abdas, where are you from? He said, well, I'm, uh, I'm a Christian and I am from Nainawa. Nainawa is a city in the in the country of Iraq and uh, he said oh you are from the village of the righteous prophet he said how do you know about uh, Yunus ibn Matta the righteous he said well he's my brother he's he was a prophet and I'm a prophet well once he knew that Adas knew for sure that no one else around there would know about Nainawa and about Yusuf, Yunus ibn Matta uh, والسلام, who was a prophet there and he started to kiss his head, his hands and his feet and then Shaiba and Utba were looking at him and they said look I think this you know the man actually uh, kind of like uh, uh, got your, 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 your servant into his side it, you know he, he like uh, kind of like made magic to him so uh, after Adas uh, sat with him and came back he said what happened Adas he said well a man this man said something that is uh, not uh, known to, to people here and he said uh, he is a prophet well he said Adas keep your religion don't let him uh, take you away from your religion but Adas became a Muslim that was uh, very interesting and, and kind of a relief from what happened uh, during this journey to Taif where the Prophet ﷺ felt very, very, uh, 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 you know, having hard feeling uh, not receiving this. In fact, Aisha anha at one point in time said, uh, was there any day uh, more hard to you than, uh, than uh, you know, uh, when people turned you in Mecca? He said, yes. Well, uh, I was one time at Qarn al-Tha'alib, Qarn al-Tha'alib, uh, where uh, I was, uh, he said, uh, when I met uh, these people, Qarn al-Tha'alib is, is now known as Qarn al-Manazil, where it's in the vicinity of Taif. And he said, I met these people and they turned me down and they started mocking me and, and uh, uh, criticizing my religion. In fact, they, dro drove, they drove me out. So that was, that was a very, very hard, time because he was looking for support he was hoping that they would give him some support but they never did and after this the prophet والسلام, went to a place called Nakhla uh, and, and that is between Mecca and Taif on the way back to Taif and he at night remember this he he was only with uh, Zayd ibn Haritha and there are the two of them only uh, uh, was on this journey were on this journey now, the Prophet ﷺ stood in, in prayer uh, between uh, Taif and, uh, and Mecca and started to read uh, his, his, in his, and, and started to pray his night prayer. And then he, uh, he recited the Quran. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent some jinn uh, to listen to him and to uh, uh, receive the glorious Qur'an. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in Surah Al-Ahqaf, as you know, وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنْصِتُوا فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ Now they received the message, the Prophet was not aware of what was happening, but in fact they were doing this, they were um, listening, uh, to what the Quran w w w was the saying and then they uh, kind of like uh, accepted Islam and they liked this and immediately 
they went to their own people back into the world of the jinn and they started to deliver the message. So they started to warn them, well, look, we heard uh, a prophet saying something nice and good and great for you. So why don't you uh, become Muslim? Answer the call of Allah. Ya qawmana ajibu da'i Allahi wa aminu bihi yaghfir lakum min dhunubikum wa yujirkum min adhabin alim. So they started to, to say that, subhanallah. It was, it was very, very interesting how uh, these uh, uh, jinn accepted the message of Islam. And, uh, uh, you know, subhanallah, uh, the, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, went through many, many difficult days and times. And, uh, but at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving him support and showing him signs of something good that they wanted to, uh, to, to, to get. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, when... Uh, he, he returned to Mecca. Now, his own people in Mecca kicked him out and the people of Taif rejected him and even drove him uh, out of their own city and place. Well, where would he go? Uh, Zayd ibn Haritha was telling him, now, would you go back again to your own people and you would not be protected? But you know, there was a, a good tradition with the Arabs is that you come into the protection of someone and you ask the protection of somebody uh, from your own tribe, from your own people, your own family. And once you're in his protection, no one dares to come to you or would uh, try to harm you in any way. Now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sent to uh, Al Mut'im uh, Ibn Adi from the people of Khuza'a, from the tribe of Khuza'a. And uh, 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 he said to him, will I be in your uh, uh, company? Will I be under your protection? He said, yes. And what he did in order to, to, to um, uh, put that into, into, into action, he asked his own people and his own sons, and he said, wear your own arms, meaning your own uh, uh, swords, your own arrows and bows and and uh, spears and be around the uh, uh, corners of the of the Kaaba meaning if anyone wants to attack the Prophet we will stand by him and we will not let this happen so he والسلام, entered into the the uh, Kaaba into the uh, uh, Al Masjid Al Haram with uh, Zayd Ibn Haritha and uh, uh, Al Mut'ib Ibn Adi was standing on his own uh, 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 animal, uh, the one uh, that is most probably was, was a camel, and he said, uh, O Quraysh, uh, I have uh, accepted the uh, protection. I have intended to protect Muhammad, so no one should ever dare to harm him or do anything bad to him. So that was, that was the way that... Uh, uh, he dealt with them and they and, and he and the Prophet ﷺ went back uh, peacefully into his own house. Now, look at these uh, uh, great supports that the Prophet ﷺ received. And that is first the, uh, the patience that he had, uh, again with uh, uh, the acceptance of Abbas, who was uh, a Christian. And then, uh, in fact, uh, one other incident is that um, when he was coming, uh, and uh, he was very frustrated. Uh, Jibril came to him and he said, with me is the, uh, uh, the angel of uh, mountains. And he said, uh, should I uh, uh, send uh, this uh, angel to you in order to, um, you know, close the two big mountains of, uh, of, uh, of Mecca upon them, meaning upon Quraysh and they will ever die. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get uh, out from their own, uh, uh, you know, backs someone who would 
uh, worship Allah alone and the associate partners. And that's exactly that's what happened because from Abu, Jah Abu Jahl came Ikrimah ibn Abu Jahl who was a Muslim. From Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira uh, came al Khalid ibn Walid. And they were all supporters of Islam. They were soldiers of Islam to support his cause. So Alhamdulillah, yes, the Prophet ﷺ was patient, was um, uh, kind, was hoping to change for the best. So we always have, uh, we should always have that feeling to be uh, hoping for the best, even during difficult times. This brings us to the end of this episode. I will see you inshallah in the next, uh, next episode on the series of uh, glimpses from the fragment prophetic biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Until then, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. وبركاته ما كان محمد ابا احد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما